Let's talk to Sandy Sandy Bags. Sandy Buttcrack. Sandy Bags. Yo, what's up, man? Hello? I couldn't read the hey. name. I'm sorry. Sorry, I just got caught off guard because the the stream's so slow. You're oh, here. Okay. We got the way you. That you're, the, way, the way you're positioned. Oh, it looked like you were the, the yeah, fourth beetle. You're the fourth beetle. <laughs> Look at <laughs> yeah. you're Ringo. All right, all right, yeah. Stay right there. there hey, oh, let's there be real. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. hey, Royce, I want that front page Mega 60 World next week. He, I think he deserves it. Anyway, uh, uh, he, he would have been better than Ringo. Let's face it. Yeah, oh, see? Very nice. He yeah. could shred so, better than Ringo. Anyway. How's it going? You so what is your name from? caller? Sandy Bags. Wait, what was the question? What's your name? Sandy Bagger. Okay, yeah, I couldn't read it and I didn't know if it was, yeah, I thought I saw an S. Oh. Anyway, what's up? How's it going? Hey, uh, I tried to call in last time, but yeah, I was out, so. Uh, well, my question is, what is something that, ha that has happened to you that you take for granted, but it changed your life in a big way? That toothbrush call. <laughs> uh, I don't know why about my friend's take teeth. Take for granted it changes your life in a big way. Puberty. I take it for granted all the time. But uh, I'm a man now. <laughs> and then when you sometimes think back at it, and then you think, oh, what if that didn't happen? What would I be doing right now? Apart from obviously being a part of Mega 64. Hmm, yeah, that's a good... I mean, you know, it sounds so basic, but... Driving my car, or you know what I mean? It's like I driving. think about that. I think about like there's a lot of people who don't have a car. I used to not drive, and now I'm driving around. I'm just you know, I don't, true. I don't know where it's going with that. I don't know. For me, it was that. moving to Orange County because I dated, I dated girls that lived up there that I wouldn't have dated if I lived down here. I made friends up there. I had jobs up there, mm -hmm. and like I don't think about how something so simple would be. My life would be totally different. Totally shift if, your perspective. If if I would have just lived down here, I don't know how long I would have lived with my parents. I don't know, yeah. you know, I, I would have gone to SDSU. I don't know if I would have just like branched out like I did when I lived up there, because uh, I had a lot of yeah. like, really interesting experiences up there. So that's mine. Hmm. Just moving. Yeah. yeah, I have a moving story too because I moved to Canada six years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived in India for thirteen years of my life. Jeez. And it was it was. It was weird because I think about it now. I have a job right now. Um, I, I think I'm better at guitar right now than I would be. So that's awesome. It's, it's weird. Well, see, that, that's yeah. cool. Like, you wouldn't have had that opportunity. If moving. You had, moving. Like, what a weird kind of thing to happen in your life. Oh, I'm way better at guitar now because I moved from India six years ago. Yeah. And you don't. Yeah. It's, what, what, I, what a I, weird kind of thing that doesn't seem connected. But is you're way better at girlfriends, Eric, because you moved to Orange County. I that you can ask the girls that I dated. Uh, that might be wrong. Oh yeah. shit! Uh, you know, well, then it's their fault because they fucked you up. Boom! It's their responsibility. Yeah, to they make put you a all that. Boyfriend. They put all that baggage in your head. Yeah, all of that, all my head baggage. You know, this this is gonna sound so dumb, but I really think that uh, the stupid shit I watched growing up, like Power Rangers, is gonna sound really dumb. But my whole affinity for that is not that I think it's like a great show today or whatever or a nostalgia thing even for me it influenced it I'm watching this and I'm seeing they're clearly splicing a different show in when they'd cut to something or they'd you know and then that made me really look into wow it would be really interesting to have that job. You to know? make that. And then it led to me thinking, wow, and then they have to redouble all this. And that got me kind of interested in like voice acting. And then I remember looking on a lot of message board with people, you know, people talking about, oh, I hear next season they cast so and so, and reading about the audition process and thinking, acting kind of sounds fun too. And I just remember in general thinking, I think honestly, watching dumb TV shows really got me to want to, you know, specifically, honestly, like Power Rangers really made me want to investigate like making something out of essentially nothing you know what i mean only been giving a couple clips of some crappy thing and having to make a story out of it yeah you know i think that that i still think about or that that planted a germ in my head you know what i mean i think like getting my grandparents old eight millimeter camera and film and skate videos and dumb shit with my friends mm -hmm. got me geared to be like i'm making this stuff and i show it to my other friends and they think it's funny Maybe I could make more of this stuff. And then I didn't for years until I met you guys. I, uh, yeah, for me, it was, 
If I wasn't cast in Damn Yankees, mm-hmm. I would have never continued with drama. Wow. Mm-hmm. I was it was I was being cast in that. I tried out. It was that, or I was gonna try out for baseball. That was later on. That was, mm-hmm. that was like the next week. Yeah. But I got cast in Damn Yankees. It's like okay, but if if I wasn't cast in that. I would have mm-hmm. never joined Dude. drama. I would have never met you guys. You I've might have played been... for the Pirates or something, though. I could have played for the <laughs> yeah, you would have... Pirates. Yeah, you probably have a lot more money. Yeah. Hey, like, first, probably, well, no, first I mean, season. He wouldn't have got years. cast in Damn Yankees, so then he would have said, well, now my summer's free. I'm going to try out for the baseball team. You do that baseball. You get good. You get scouted. You become a Pirate. Uh, but... Yeah, definitely. That you could be definitely living happen. high on the hog right but now. It's, it's really funny because the same kind of thing for me. I think... I'm not going to speak for everybody, but I think I share it with you where I think, like, auditioning set me on a path. Yeah. And it did for you, too. And for me, what started that, it wasn't like this or baseball, for like, you know, for you. Mm-hmm. For me, it legitimately was, and it's so stupid, but I legitimately remember being on, I used to go on news groups. I was a nerd. I had the internet since 92, so I was a nerd, nerd. looking at st- at news groups before there were message boards or anything like that. And I remember reading stuff from people who auditioned <laughs> for shit like Power Rangers and those shows that they had to splice shows into right. and talking about the audition process. And I was so into that in like sixth grade and stuff like that, that it made me go, I really got to try I don't I'm not afraid of that stuff mm-hmm. so I gotta try that and I feel like I know a lot about it and whatever and whatever you know that just kept ramping up in my head till we went to high school and it's like yeah. well, I gotta do it I got you know I gotta do something and so you know and that really for me that's where it started for me it was just like I could sit at a computer all day but I'm not afraid of this stuff so what good does it do yeah. me just sitting here and building websites you know it's like I, I want to do something outgoing so yeah definitely this is weird though. What would have happened if you never went to those news groups? Yeah, you know. What would have happened or, if Miss Jones decided, ah, he's not good enough? Like, I don't, like, I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Weird. Don't know. Don't know, man. Mm. Anyway, that was a good call, man. All right. I just had another remark. I should have called in after, what? You should have t- taken my call after the headgear guy. Yeah. Because I have something to say about headgear. Okay. <laughs> Just look at me. I mean, <laughs> oh, come, on, come, on. You, come on, man. I mean, lo- I mean, look. Well, what I is thought, that? I thought you what were is... making a Beatles reference, you know? I don't know. You, you know, you like those sunglasses John's got back. There. What is that called? Is that called a turban? Yeah. Okay. I worked at uh, Qualcomm with a lot of guys that were from India, and uh, when I was a electronics tech there, I supported a whole lab of guys, really smart uh, engineers. Uh, electrical engineers and and a lot. I remember my friend Srinivas Didikavi. He he wore a, a couple different colorful ones. Can you wear different colored ones? Yeah, but I mainly wear black. You go because, black. You know, you're, you're classic, dude. Thing. Keep it classic. I remember Srinivas would have like a like a light blue one sometimes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to computing science in university oh, as well, so oh, that yeah. works out, I guess. Um, I was gonna say real quick. You said you were you said you were in India. What thirteen years did you say? Yeah, yeah. What, what, is there anything that you was there any is there anything that you miss that was there, or was there anything you really hated about being there, on both ends of the spectrum? Well, it's it's just that you know people here are much nicer. I think. Oh really? Yeah, and well, I got some bullying, but it was from Indian people, which is really weird. Hmm. Huh. Well, you're oh, in Canada, oh, yeah. so people are nice in general up that's there. That's true. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, it's, it's, it's nice. And what do you miss? Uh, well, I had a bunch of friends there, but they weren't really my friends, let's be honest. <laughs> oh, whoa. Dang. Okay. Real, real shit. Put it down. Well, what about yeah. f- the food? Gold diggers. <laughs> well, no, we get the same food here. Okay. Oh, there you go. There's a huge Indian community in Vancouver, so you get the same food, everything. So you don't miss anything. Sweet. Well, yeah. And if I didn't move here, I wouldn't have discovered Rush. D- hey, <laughs> there you go. There you go. I, I like. I like that you're from India, calling from Canada, wearing a Captain America shirt. Yeah. <laughs> and with, he's a Rush with fan. British boxers back here. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a requirement of of Canadians all love Rush? 
Yeah. They have to. They all have that tattoo of that, like, the fly by night, like, naked guy. Of Neil Peart? No, the owl. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. Actually, in Canada, because there's so few, like, Canadian artists of prominence that there's a law mandating that they have to play Canadian music on the radio. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that, that is a real and thing. So they like can only choose from like Rush and Avril Lavigne and a handful of bands. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, yeah, they are legally required yeah, to listen. Wow, to dude, hell yeah! Shout out, Brian Adams. Brian when Adams. like Ashley would be down here, she would like when Avril Lavigne would come on, she get like she cool. Thanks. <laughs> er, uh, Garrett just farted. Punctuated the point. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think of Avril Lavigne. You know, me and my friend Connor used to call her a Navril. Oh shit, man! Dude, <laughs> no, yeah, never. Was that oh, for oh, like oh, that badass? Didn't get to finish the rest of the sentence, but oh, uh, the <laughs> for the for I the first like down. three <laughs> years that she was prominent, I did not know her name wasn't a Navril Levine. Fuck, dude. I know. You, well, it, I'm fucking god. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I take it back. I'm sorry, I made. Fun I don't. Of you. Good call. I'm sorry, I made fun of you, man. Yeah, come back. Well, here, you know what my response is to that. <laughs> um. Uh. No, but anyway, when, when Ashley would be down here, she would hear Avril Lavigne come on. She'd get like dark. It would just be like. I thought I escaped this. Oh, it was wow. like it was such a like you you ha people go crazy when they hear that. Oh, well, now it's Justin Bieber. I bet. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Definitely. Is it? <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. Anyway. I, I joke to my friends that I have to be famous to compensate for Justin Bieber now. Smart. Hey. Good move. No better reason. Good plan. No better reason. So, well, thank you. Hey, it was a good call, man. Am I blind? Am I blind? Next did album you, coming out by Sandy Vega on the Mega 64 label. Okay. okay. Right. Sounds good. All right, on the label. On the right. label. To the task. I didn't. I couldn't remember if you answered what he was saying about. Uh, I don't know what I would take. What I do take for granted. Other than I guess having, uh, you know, being told I was funny, in like eight, eighth or ninth grade. Yeah, like, that's true. And running yeah. with that, because when you're a kid, you make your friends laugh, but to have like an adult tell you, yeah, like, hey, you're funny, and not everybody is. Yeah. Just I guess set me down my life path. Hey, something that just like that, but something that always stuck with me, and I wonder, I wonder where the hell this guy is. I remember specifically, it was, I took drumline in ninth grade, and I was really, like, yeah. trying to get into music, and my drum teacher, I sucked at drums, but he told me all the time, like, you're really funny. So I quit music, and I joined theater. Honestly, really? That's, that's, a, that's a good example. Yeah, you know? well, I was gonna say, I think that's really interesting. it's funny, how, it's funny, because with me, ninth grade, but a big thing, you know, I, I was already thinking I would do that kind of stuff, but I didn't know how to get into it. And I still hadn't, even in ninth grade, I hadn't auditioned for a play yet. I was yeah. starting to do theater classes. Yeah. But I didn't know, like, is it just okay that I audition for some big role that I know senior wants? You know, it's like, I don't know, right. you know, whatever. I just felt like it wasn't my place yet, but maybe I'd get my way there if I took these classes, you know, and I didn't quite do it. And I remember, yeah, it was towards the end of ninth grade, and I was in the library just being an asshole. I don't remember, I don't remember what was going on. Someone was giving me shit about something. Okay. And I just, and you guys know how, if some, if there's a tense situation, what I'll do at, you know, a business, if someone's an asshole, oh, or yeah. wherever. I played like I was retarded. Okay. So where they are now asking me questions, I'm going, I, no, no. Well, you know, just whatever. I'm like acting like an idiot, and they know that I'm playing, but it's pissing them off so bad that I'm not talking like a person. Right. And they're going, whatever. Like a person. And then I'm doing that, I'm doing that to piss this guy off. I'm doing this to piss this guy off. You know, off. he was impersonating a monster. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> a subhuman being. <laughs> he was a character. Anyway. Oh my God. Anyway, this guy's getting pissed off. Then I notice about three other tables go like, oh, poor guy. At me. Like, oh, that's really that's really a shame they're picking on that poor boy. And they are all they are all assuming that I am actually there's something wrong with me that right. I'm acting like that. Right. And all of this. And I think the other people I was with at that point are logically thinking, well, he'll stop now. But that just made it better to me because I don't care about those people. Right. So I continue to do that. And anyway, at one point my friends went, got up and went to go get books. And I remember, do you remember Bobby Lewis? I do remember Bobby Lewis. Yeah. yeah. And he, he was an actor there. And at yeah, that point yeah, he was yeah. like a senior. Yeah, yeah. And I'll never forget, he, I never talked to him like before or since. But he came and sat down on the table, and he goes, you know, half this room thinks you're retarded. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I'm thinking this guy's really going to, like, maybe this guy's really pissed or something. Yeah. You know, I don't know. And he goes, you know, you, the fact that you're not auditioning is a waste. 
like seriously, if you don't care, if you're doing this and you don't care and everyone's convinced by your performance, why aren't you doing it? And I was like, yeah, I guess. He's like, yeah, no, don't guess. Just go on, just fucking audition, okay? And then he left, and that just like, Whoa. that stuck with me. I was like, that's right. fucking cool. So that was a cool guy. And I never saw him again. I never talked to him again. That's when Rocco learned acting like a retard will get you we'll places. Get you places. And then he got free ice cream at the gas station later. So and I did. Yeah, That's it's right. true. There I we did. Go. Anyway. Well, that was a good question and a good call. Okay. Oh, sorry. I forgot we were still connected to Skype. Okay. 